Welcome back to the Believe in Badger football podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by betonline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? Man, we're living the dream. I'm in sunny Wisconsin. It's like in the 30s. You got to wear sunscreen today. Um, We have someone on the show who I think everyone knows uh everyone who's your whole family i've been a fan for pretty much my entire life we're from the same area ish which uh (laughs) i think is special and someone who has way more experience in the areas that i think are fans and people want to talk about uh matt sims thank you for joining us qb now matt perkins hit me off with where where he is i don't Uh, want to get it wrong you yeah you (laughs) uh, you can find matt sims on the first team podcast on the believe podcast network Matt, it's awesome to have you back. We had you on just the other week talking Nick Evers. And now uh, we got another quarterback that I think Badger fans are going to be really excited about here. So welcome back. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to be back. And I'm so excited to talk football, talk ball, talk about quarterbacks, man. And uh, man, who would have thought that, uh, you know, in, in two weeks time, I'd be doubling up with the Wisconsin Badgers, man. So I appreciate the op, man. Really excited. <laughs> we love it. It's uh, the triple Matt show here today. So uh, <laughs> right, when, yeah. when someone says Matt, we hope we all don't get confused. But uh, <laughs> even if we do, it's OK, because. Uh, here on Believe in Badgers, we are presented by betonline.ag. They remain your number one source for all things uh, online wagering. You name it, they've got it over at betonline.ag. College football, as the season comes to a wrap, you know you want to get in on some of those CFP games. NFL season's coming to a wrap, too. Got to get it in while you can. NBA, college basketball, golf, esports, it's there at Bet Online. So head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. When you head over to betonline.ag, betonline, where the game starts. All right, Matt Sims. (laughs) Uh, We're going to start by talking maybe Matoyer. I did like a rapid reaction last week to this kid, but 6'6", 215, 220, I mean, you look at him, he just looks like uh, Trevor <laughs> Lawrence slash Sunshine. Right, but right. L- let's get into it. 2024 quarterback, four starts, a big get. I'm going to talk really big picture first. From a recruiting standpoint, Matt, what does it mean to land a big-time QB this early in the cycle? Well, this is definitely something that we've seen recently in the past few years where you're seeing more and more young quarterbacks committing earlier and kind of solidifying their their spot at a certain location, right? At a big, you know, Division One program. Because in nowadays, you know, uh, transfer portal and all that, everything is just so unpredictable that you kind of leave yourself in a very dangerous situation if you have 20 offers, but never really fully commit to anybody. You know, what I kind of advise even some of my quarterbacks that I work with is, hey, you can commit and commit, but you don't have to sign anything until you feel really comfortable with it. And you can always decommit and go someplace else. But at the worst case, you at least have that one spot that you're committed to. And the the organization knows it, you know it, and the rest of the country does too. So it, it gives you a little bit of a leeway to have more flexibility going forward with the NILs, with the transfer portal and all the unpredictable things that apply to that yeah absolutely go ahead burn no i i I totally agree with you it's like a safety net type of deal right absolutely wisconsin is is a safety net now in your professional like experience what what does that do do you like it's like a job offer if you get another one you can use it against is that something that happens in this day and age absolutely i mean this wisconsin offer is definitely going to be used as leverage to acquire more offers down the line from other schools that he is interested in or maybe where he ultimately wants to go if he has an ulterior motive you know the issue now for wisconsin is is that you landed the big fish now you got to keep reeling it in until it's in the actual boat and that's what i think is extremely stressful for a lot of these college coaches nowadays because you get all these early commitments and we saw this past week you know during signing day a lot of guys jumped ship in the last 48 to 24 hours and it was quite a circus so it's one of these things where hey great job you landed Mar- uh Mar- uh Mabry, excuse me but now it's like you got to keep reeling in me you got to keep selling them in the product and hopefully with phil longo and, and coach fickle and this new look offense it's a very attractive way for him to keep luring him into the program 
Yeah, you know, well, some, of his, co- oh. some of his comments, I'm going to say, was like, he was really interested in North Carolina because of Phil Longo. He was really right. interested in Wisconsin because of culture. Well, now you got both of those two things at the same place. So I'm definitely, you know, obviously it's it's early. There's still, you know, there's still a year out from early signing day for mm-hmm. the 2024 class. But, you know, it's a it's a great stepping stone for the Badgers. Now, let's talk about his skill set a little bit more in depth here, because you know, he, like we said, he is a big kid. He is a thick kid. What's the first thing that pops to you when you look at the tape, Matt? I mean, the first thing that pops is just what everyone else will do when they watch the film. Like, dude is every bit of six six, and you think, man, he must be playing in a very low class of athletes because he just towers over Betty on the field, but he's playing 6A football. He's playing, you know, a, a brand of football that's pretty elite as far as the rest of the country goes in high school football. And he makes some of those dude looks look uh, almost, uh, you know, middle school, junior high-ish at times. Um, the upside for him is is just is beyond words, you know? So, and that's really what you're looking at for him, right? You know, he has obviously the frame, the size, the running ability. You know, the thing that I really get excited about too is that it looks like he has this just natural confidence and coolness about him playing the position. And he has a a little bit of a mean streak and attitude which I love, you know, which I think will fit in great with Coach Fickle, Coach Longo, and just that Big Ten Wisconsin attitude going forward, too, with this new look offense. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, Burn. No, I I, I love it. I'm I'm just concerned about what's the percentage you think, uh, Matt Sims, of him literally staying and saying, Wisconsin's my place. I'm going to – is it 20 percent? Is it 10? I mean, I'm sure everyone's going to still attack this kid – Right. Um, offer him deals. Yeah. And then, I mean, w- when you're a top 150, top 100 prospect in the country, I mean, right. it's as we saw, like Matt just talked about, like Dante Moore just last week, then, you know, arguably the yeah. number one quarterback in the country flips from Oregon to UCLA 48 hours before signing day, which, you know, and is that an NIL in, in your, ex- I, listen, I graduated in 04, 05, actually, jeez, it's been a long <laughs> time. So like, None of this was around. So what right. are people still behind the, the like, hey, the NIL over here at UCLA or Texas or, I don't know, Michigan could be doing it. Who knows? Saying, is that is that part of the process? And then um, I, I don't think everyone understands. You know, Wisconsin, no team's really going to take like two, three quarterbacks in the same year. So right. there are limited spots. Mm-hmm. But this guy seems like he could really pick wherever he wants to be. So just, I know that's, a, I just threw a lot at you, but. No, that's okay. Yeah, hit me with like what your thought process is on like literally getting this dude signed and in Madison. Yeah, so I mean, just like what you said earlier, uh, is that it, it's a year from the signing day for 2024. It's a long time, and obviously the NIL thing is really one of the main contributors to some of these flips that happened last second. You know, because I mean, when you're looking at it from the situation of an 18 year old kid, you know, if you're getting paid two hundred thousand dollars, then all of a sudden some other school comes in and says, "Hey, we're going to give you an extra three hundred thousand dollars." You know, to me, you know, I'm not great at math, but I'm going to do you know the little bit extra. You know, I'm going to get that extra credit. You know, and change my life and you know the people uh, who are around me's lives. You know, overnight. And, um, you know, that's just a random number I threw out there. I don't even know if that exists for whoever, but, you know, going forward for some of these quarterbacks, like it's going to get even larger and a bigger ticket going forward, you know, for some of these top players, you know, the other aspect of the NIL that's really interesting too, is that a lot of guys are going to get paid a lot of money. And in some cases they might not even end up being the starter at that school. So that'll be curious to see where a lot of dead money goes, um, going forward. Um, but going forward really for Wisconsin, this is a great sign. This is a great sign for just the, the new start to the program, the way they envision the program growing and, and evolving from what it used to be. You know, for a long time, it was old school football. It's kind of like Nebraska, right? For a long time, like everybody knew what Nebraska was doing. It wasn't sexy. It wasn't whatever. But man, it was efficient and it worked. The same thing for Wisconsin. Wasn't sexy. Didn't have all the bells and whistles to it. But man, it worked for a long time until it didn't. Now, recently, everyone is starting to think, you know what? We got to jump on this ship. We got to be more aggressive offensively to attract more attractive football players to our community. Because anybody who's been to Wisconsin, and I've never been, but man, the stories that I hear about Wisconsin and that environment over there is absolutely ridiculous. And I would love to be a part of it too. You know, so they got that going for them. They got a great culture. The key is now is don't let the program fall apart 
before the culture does, right? And, and that's what some other schools in the past have kind of missed out on. Um, so, oh, yeah, I'm go sorry. ahead. I, so I just, I want to jump, I want to keep digging into that because I think the culture is huge and you're right about Wisconsin. Right. What do you see from your knowledge of Fickle? He's a Big Ten guy, so I love that already. Right. He has flipped dudes who are leaving to come back. One yeah. guy went just going to Minnesota and now he's coming back. Right. So what does that tell you about him and his personality and the kind of the culture he's trying to instill at Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, to me, this is one of the most exciting hires of this off season, right? I mean, I think it's been something that's very underrated because it doesn't quite have the pizzazz and splash of a Deion Sanders to Colorado. But I mean, Luke fickle is a proven commodity in, in every facet of a coach and as a man's man, as far as coaching men, you know, or young men into grown men. And I mean, just like when you when I looked back and did a little research into him a little bit more, you know, to get prepared for the show, you know, you just can't wrap your head around how successful he's been at a school like Cincinnati, getting him into the college football playoff. I mean, let's face it. This guy is a part of the recruiting process that got so many guys that were maybe under the radar to drafted in the NFL. So what was it? Uh, he had, I think, 21 or 22 players in his six years from Cincinnati drafted to the NFL, which to me is like, uh, I would say that that's probably more so than any other head coach has done at the Cincinnati program at that time, right? I'm just guessing, you know, national coach of the year, 2021, right? And Cincinnati with that great run that they had. I mean, you know, and just the, the growth and improvement of players over time, you know, I mean, this is a guy that found Sauce Gardner, and Sauce Gardner is now the best cornerback in the NFL right now. So clearly, they know and see talent very clearly. And the other aspect is this: dudes won nine Big Ten championships, seven as a coach, and two as a player. I mean, that's like very Bill Belichickian <laughs> type of resume, you know, to add to it. So that gets me very excited that he knows, you know, the demographic of of the people that he's competing against. He knows the lay of the land too, as far as what he thinks the culture needs to kind of be revitalized, you know, as far as he's seen Wisconsin from an outside perspective. Now that he's in there, he kind of knows, man, we can do so many great things with it. And the fact is too, he's a great leader of men. And anytime that you walk into someone's household and you're recruiting a young man, right. To go to that school for the next four years of the life, you know, that's an extremely important thing for a lot of parents and guardians out there, knowing that this grown man is going to take care of my son going forward. And this is a job, too, for Luke Fickle. It's not like a stepping stone type of thing. He's taking this job because he wants to have this job for the next 10, 15 years of his life. You know, and that's another thing to me that's even more attractive as a player looking at it from the outside. Dude, Matt, you are getting me so excited. We just won a bowl game. I'm already excited. <laughs> and now I'm like so pumped. Listen, I completely agree with you. What he's done in this short time frame to me says we're changing everything. Right. We're going to be competitive for the four man or whatever. We're going 12, 12 team. 12 to me is too much. We could talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I thought four was too little. And now I'm like, that's the, the, the best. Like that is the premier outside yeah. of the Super Bowl. I, I, right? I, am a, I am personally a six team playoff person with the top two seeds getting buys. But, you too. know, they, it, that, but that's a debate for another that's day. A, yeah. Let's talk Honest, about I'm cool with 12 because all the other bowl games I could care less about. Well, so there you know, lies the problem with the playoff system. <laughs> you know, uh, for, for whatever reason about it, you know, when I turn on the TV and there's 10 people in the stands, I'm immediately like next, you know. <laughs> so and it could be a good game. But, man, it is tough to watch when it has an environment like that. So I like the expansion. I think it's better for just the entire layout of you know, the whole business of what it is. Um, it's good for the players, good for the coaches, good for the programs, and just accumulating more money to each individual school. <laughs> and I also hope these guys will play in the bowl games if if they're in the playoffs. All these are different because we're not talking that. Yeah, yeah, can, no, we yeah. Go, we I know. Get deep into all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, good thoughts, though. <laughs> good thoughts. So we, so for me, so I want to ask you, Fickle brings in Longo, right. who is an air raid. It seems like a little bit different aspect of of offense. You know, I'm from the power. I, you know, era. Yeah. 
I'm we can excited. tell by by the uh, width of your neck, uh, where, you know, your background. <laughs> I don't know how to get it smaller, man. It does, um, it's just who you are, brother. It's all you know good. What? It yeah. just is like got traps to my ears. I got nothing. Like you got no doubt, man. Me. No doubt. Um, I appreciate you. You're not the first or last person that'll probably have no to doubt, tell me man. That. Hey, if I saw you at a bar, I'm like, hey, that's a nice guy. Don't mess with him. <laughs> yeah, he is a nice guy. I will say that. Everyone but, at the bar is uh, is Bernie's best friend. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Matt, come to a game with me and, and you'll have a blast. I Absolutely. Promise. I already I'll know that. the red carpet out. It'll I'm be down. hilarious. I'll be there. Um, so what, what, first off, I'm super excited about Longo. I think we need a revitalization. I'm a fullback. So I want the fullback to be on the field. Right. I'm also like, eh, well, if he's not on the field and I hate to say this and we win championships, I'm like completely <laughs> okay with that. Right. So, so what, what's the excitement? You know, what are kids saying? Are they like, man, Fickle and Longo now? Like, we need to be at Wisconsin. I feel like everyone wants to be us, and people are very scared of what Wisconsin will be. Right, moving right. Moving forward. No, absolutely. You're definitely a sleeping giant, I think, in the Big Ten right now with the pieces that you have in play going forward, which is very exciting time. I think for players to get more excited, they maybe need to see just a little bit more of it, like in real time, like on ESPN, on the highlights and, and really live it and see it, you know, for it to be something that's actually like tangible and they can be a part of. Um, but nonetheless, I do think that, you know, Fickle will do a great job of molding, you know, the, the culture that's already been there of being hard nosed, of being tough, you know, being old school, tough Wisconsin football team, mixing in the new age, aggressive style, vertical passing game that everybody really gets attracted to when they're watching football on Saturdays and Sundays. And I think they'll do a great job of meshing the two things. You know, Fickle's teams have always been extremely tough, no matter what. You know, so I think he's going to do a great job with Longo of balancing both of those aspects of their team and running something that, you know, looks along the lines of, you know, what Philadelphia does offensively right now in the NFL. You know, something that, you know, really takes advantage of great one on one opportunities with the passing game, right? Throwing the ball vertically down the field and play action and stuff like that. Then you have the aspect, too, of just the quarterback being a physical tough runner, an opportunistic runner, and making, you know, chicken salad out of chicken doo-doo a lot of the times, too. And that's from just playing wide open, you know, you know, balls to the wall type of offense. And I think that's what they'll they'll try to do. They're going to try to pressure defenses in, into, you know, creating their own tempo, which I think is always important. Whereas Wisconsin in the past, it was always like, once you guys got down, it was very difficult for you to call yourself back into the game because you were just so built on controlling the tempo, controlling the pace of the game, wearing teams out physically. You know, if Wisconsin went down 21 nothing, the game was a wrap just because they didn't have enough uh, of, of, I think, of a skill set or, or a disposal of play calling ability to just kind of let it fly. And this going forward, I think, is going to be the difference between them. And still. Yeah, uh, yeah. Matty so, uh, P, I think you I told me. Wait, yeah, go ahead, real Bern. quick. You told me, or maybe you didn't, or I heard it from somewhere else, is that he <laughs> still runs the ball 60% of the time. Right. Just right. not what we're used to seeing. So so to me, that's that 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 means he's putting the ball in the hands of the guys that we need to touch the football. And I think we have dudes on our team right now who don't touch the football enough. Right. That they sh- and they're studs. So that to me is I'm very excited to see, you know, a lot of our wide receivers touch the ball more. And and that's something, too, that me and Perk discussed last time I was on the show was just the fact that, like, yeah, Longo is more patient with the run than people like to give it credit for. And I think that is something that, again, Wisconsin will continue to be able to attract the running backs that they've been accustomed to getting at that school with this type of offense. I think the biggest advantage, what we discussed last time, Perk, is now you're going to attract the quarterbacks that really take you to that next level, and you're going to attract the receivers and the skill groups that long that go along with them to that program, which will totally be a game changer. Yeah. I mean, you just look at the athletes that he recruited to North Carolina, right? right. You look at your Josh Downs, your Javante Williams, the Michael Carters, the Drake may, right. You know, these right. guys, even, I mean, Sam Howell was, was a, they came in together. Sam Howell was a true freshman when Longo came in in his first year as the OC and Howell was great from the jump. And mm-hmm. so one of the, I think it's really interesting though, Matt, that you mentioned the Eagles offense, because when I see what the Eagles do with Jalen Hurts and they're going four wide a lot and it's a lot of 
quick, one read, two read, and then you're going to bail from the pocket and run. We, When you look at Evers' tape that we talked about last week, he's he's really, really good at that. I think Matoyer, though, brings a different element with the physicality of the way that he runs. Evers right. might have, you know, ha- has probably better top speed and athleticism, but I'm going to bring up the tape here because I want to go back to Matoyer just for a second, and we're going to mm-hmm. watch it because yeah. I love the way that this kid, just his demeanor on the field is palpable through the tape. It, it is, and that's where when Matoyer is interesting too because when you watch the tape, you'll be like, you know what? He's actually not moving that fast. But anybody that's 6'6", six, looks like they're moving slow. They're just covering a lot of ground with their big steps, right? But I love the physicality. Here's the athleticism of the hurdle, right? I mean, to be able to jump off that one foot and get vertical like that and then continue to accelerate after that, I mean, what a highlight that is in itself, you know? But you see the athleticism just naturally, right? I mean, man, perfect stride after the hurdle, too. I mean, Perk definitely would have fell on his face on that one. But, you know, <laughs> oh, and well, then here... Bernie would not, though. Bernie uh, Bernie is a legendary hurdler. In well, let's Wisconsin. face it. Bernie would have totally truck stick that safety yeah. right there. Yeah. He would have hurdled him. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the things that really get me excited are like the clip that you saw before. I think this is a guy that that really just hasn't even reached the ceiling of his potential of throwing ability. I think he has so much more room to grow as a thrower. You know, when you're 6'6 like that, you know, typically you have big hands. Typically you have long arms. And when you're big handed and long armed, that means that you can manipulate and and do more aggressive things with the football compared to other people that have smaller hands. This is why people make a big deal out of it at the combine every year. You know, Aaron Rodgers has huge hands. He does unbelievable things with the football. You know, Pat Mahomes has pretty good hands too, as well. Like he does great things with the football and manipulates the football extremely well. Justin so for Herbert him, go- has massive hands. And we see what he's done early in his career in the NFL. And he fits that same type of look and presence on the field. Here's another great look too, as well, of just the ability to create plays right that aren't there and then to make something out of it and still have an attitude and a moxie to it and finish the play strong now in the big 10 i hope he gets out of bounds a little bit more often than what he does here in high school but he'll learn that the hard way probably you know the good thing is too for him as well he runs a really good offense for high school you know as far as high school you know football iq goes it looks like they do a few different things in the run game and the pass game and it looks like they're asking him to make a lot of decisions too and that's very exciting for for me as well, because he's a guy that at least is getting realistic reps to learn and progress from at the high school level, which will just be a greater advantage for him when he meets Longo and Fickle in, in, in the offensive meeting room. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, too, because, you know, the, the last big time quarterback that Wisconsin brought in is Graham Mertz, and he was playing high school football in Kansas and say what you will. But right. Kansas is not 6A Texas football. And so, you know, Graham Mertz had shined right. at the All-American game and stuff like that. But the All-American game, as you well know, is a glorified scrimmage. And so it is, you know, I, I think that when you yeah, see... Yeah, I played comp- in it, but yeah, thanks for thanks for belittling it. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, uh, well, that's why I said, it, as you well know, it's, it's not like you were... Uh, you weren't you weren't truck sticking kids out there like like Bernie. I, I don't think at the All American game if you were uh, trying to save yourself. No, no. But I got, I got truck sticked in that game, so it wasn't it wasn't all you know rainbows and, and all that stuff. So yeah. But yeah, I mean, Matt, I just you know, I know this Wisconsin- is obviously not. Go ahead, Burn. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say Matt Sims. This definitely isn't brain surgery. But how important is it to be six six as a QB, which Wisconsin has never had? I don't think. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, in some cases, some uh, coaches don't like guys that are too tall because they feel like they can't move as well. You know, there's statues in that backfield. But, you know, what I see from him is I see almost kind of like a, a Ben Roethlisberger type of player, a Josh Allen type of player. He's got the length. He's got the height, you know, but he also has great athleticism and balance, you know, that makes it another level of just exceptional ability, which is always exciting, you know? And that's where, like, you get excited about his frame because it's not like he's a super skinny, you know, rail skinny type of uh, 6'6 kid. He's well-built 6'6". You know, he's a kid that, like, if he was a tight end, I would assume that he'd be a three-star tight end off the jump just from his, you know, metrics that way. You know, and those are things, the measurables you can't take away and coaches absolutely look at. So the fact that he's 6'6", he looks 6'6". He moves better than someone that is typically that height, 
right? Plays with a physicality that you got to love. You know, again, I like his throwing ability. I think, again, that's something that he can improve with time and just understanding mechanics more. Come see us at Sims Complete QB, but no pressure. And then, you know, really just the fact that, like, he's got an attitude. He's got a toughness, right? He's got that confident, cool swagger. He's comfortable at the position. These are all great things for Wisconsin football going forward. We do hope he doesn't try to take some hits, though. Like the Big Ten still has some dudes who want to light you up. For sure. Um, and if you're a quarterback running, now the, now there are a lot of rules, though, and I'm sure there were not a lot of rules when you were playing, is if you're even starting your side, you can't be touched. I kind of yeah, like right. the rules. What do you think about like all these kind of uh, QB hitting rules in, in the Big Ten, or not the Big Ten, just college and then – even in the pros, it's kind of yeah. crazy. You know, it's it's a double-edged sword a little bit with that because there are aspects of where I like that they're protecting the quarterback. There's also ways, too, where I think they go over the top and protecting the quarterback and kind of, you know, um, you know, just make it difficult on defenders to make explosive plays, right? And we see it in the NFL all the time it, to the point where it gets almost frustrating. You know, at the end of the day, the quarterback position is what sells the majority of the tickets, and we do have to protect that position and all that it entails, you know, and hey, that's the reason why we give them a lot of credit and also why we we crush them and try to rip the carpet from underneath them too really quickly as well. So yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, I like it uh, until I don't like it. And, um, you know, hey, at the end of the day, all they're really trying to do is to protect people from hurting themselves, hurting others. And, and that's an important part of the game, too, because it is fun when everyone leaves healthy. It, 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 there's nothing better when everyone leaves healthy. No doubt. It, it also makes the competition in the game better. Cause then For you're sure. You know, you know, like look at last night when we had uh, the Badgers, like half the guys aren't playing half the guys went in the portal. Same with Oklahoma state. And you're like, well, it's really fun when all the dudes are here and yeah. playing and enjoying it. I can understand some guys at this point, not playing in bowl games though. You're going to make a $10 million the next month. I think you're crazy to play in a bowl game. I want you to. Yeah. No, I, I know. And that's where it's like the Tim Tebow debate, right? Where he's like, oh, you got to do it. You got to you got to live the dream through this game and this and this. The dream is to make a lot of money playing the game you love at the highest level, you know, not beating Oklahoma State in a, you know, Meineke car care bowl or whatever it was. You know, nobody cares, you know, uh, unless you make a great highlight play. That's awesome. But like I'm moving on with my life tomorrow. Now, the college football playoff, I'm tuning in and I'm watching and I'm watching very closely. And uh, I'm critiquing, you know, like every other fan is out there and being a Monday morning quarterback, you know, but I do think the transfer portal, the NILs, all this stuff, college football playoff adjusting going forward to 12 teams. I do think that kind of puts a very strange aura around some of these other bowl games out there that are kind of random and almost borderline meaningless at times, too. So I'm curious to see how all this changes you know, in the NCAA going forward. And even if the NCAA is even necessary in a few years, I don't see the NCAA being necessary for, for college football in, in, I the don't know. Next, yeah, I, right. I don't see NCAA, the NCAA being necessary for college football soon. I see college football, the CFP literally creating its own body that is separate from, and the NCAA taking care of, you know, non-revenue sports basically, but you know, the CFP men's college basketball, maybe a couple other sports sort of right. going off and doing their own thing. Because I, I, like I said, like I really don't know if there's a place for the NCAA in the current landscape with how everything is changing between, you know, NIL and then, you know, I, I think eventually we're going to get to a place where football players, basketball players are actually employees of the university and not, um, and not, you know, students. I mean, they're still students, but they are paid directly by the university. Yeah, right. Because this, like the stuff, the NIL stuff, I actually think this is a really interesting topic that I want to go back to a little bit because it still is the Wild West out there, depending on the state right. that you're in. Some states you can get, like in Texas, you can get NIL money as a high schooler. You know? Right. And, New Jersey, you can as well. Yeah, it, 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 it can. And then so, but then some of these kids, I know things from talking to people, they will, you know, if they commit to a school, they'll get like, you know, a little upfront from the NIL, maybe 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, depending on how good you are. Well, then right. you flip your commitment and that cash is yours now. And, you know, you're not going to give it back. And so people right. are getting big mad about it and you can understand. So I think there is going to be some sort of need to structuralize all of this in a, a, in a, in a much more in a fashion. That I don't want to say it's necessarily more equitable because I don't think it's ever going to be truly equitable between the athletes and the universities. But something that is a little bit more right. in line across the board. 
Yeah, and that's where I think the future of college football going forward and maybe college football and basketball just because it is more of a money driver for the for the universities and for TV purposes. You know, I do see it as more of like how the NFL is organized. I see a commissioner that basically oversees the SEC, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the Big 12, and basically oversees those conferences, manages those conferences, create a set of rules that all of those fall under, and then... Basically, you know, it's going to be somewhere on along the lines that there's probably going to be like a cap eventually for certain teams and the amount of money that they could spend, you know, for each individual players, um, because I really think that it's going to be highly unlikely for a school like Alabama to pay their star quarterback, you know, five million dollars. Um, you know, and then sending the paycheck out to the person who is the head of the science department there that same weekend, you know, like I just I feel like just ego wise, it's not going to sync up very well at that next level. Um, but I do think there is going to be some sort of a cap placed on some of these colleges going forward, you know, just so it's not a complete wild west uh, in the future. And really, the other issue, too, is just the transfer portal, the transfer portal and all that has to be amended somehow to protect schools, um, the players themselves, right? Um, NIL money and all that has to go with it too. And most importantly to the high school kids that are trying to make it to that next jump as well, you know, because a lot of those guys are kind of jumping ship and taking spots away from other high school kids who have earned that opportunity to be at that next level. So there has to be some sort of a way to reorganize this before, you know, we let Pandora's box just completely fly open. I'm actually in the place where I think it's been opened and, now yeah. we're all trying to say, like, how can we figure out so everyone, you know, like, how could I yeah. as a red shirt have made money? How can some dude who is dirt poor make money right. if they're not starting or they're not? And and now a lot of things have changed since I was there. And I'm sure you have like you, you get more you get meals every day. You get all your meals. Some dudes were not eating because they were they couldn't. You only got one meal a week. So I, I think things have changed, but I think it's a wild, wild west. And I think um, I think you're seeing like negative sides, like Texas A and M. They're just throwing dudes on the at least in my opinion, they're throwing dudes on the field because these big donors are saying that's my guy. I paid you, give him a million dollars. Why isn't he playing? So you have dudes right. who aren't good or not not ready probably to play. Yeah, right. And that, that's what's interesting, I think, going forward for all this stuff is that uh, I'm sure there's going to be a report here in the next five years that just discusses all the dead money that's been spent on players that don't play, just like how the NFL did something recently on uh, to the owners showing how much money the owners have spent on head coaches that they ultimately fired within one or two years. And I think the NFL, uh, as far as an entire conglomerate, spent over $800 million on coaches that they fired within a year or two, you know, and that's a ridiculous number, you know, ridiculous. and it's a little skewed because when they get other jobs elsewhere, like, you know, the other job then starts to pay that out. Like, it's not like they pay it forever type of thing, but nonetheless, you know, there's a lot of bad or sudden decision making being made and there's a lot of money flying around for really no reason when there hasn't been enough uh time under task for you to really judge anything fairly and uh, i think that's going to apply too for college kids going forward right we have no metrics on the nil correct, really. correct correct and i think um, covid yeah. threw a wrench in that whole situation as well totally. where guys were like let's stay in college one more year because money's available to us now and you got guys like stenson bennett who were 30 years old playing in the college football playoff yeah i want to go back and play i want to make some money <laughs> yeah. no um, doubt no doubt i mean that's nothing so new, though. i know we, we we're way over win the heisman oh. in a national title when he was like 29 or whatever right 31 i was a high school high no doubt heisman. no doubt and he was like the first ever now we're seeing too many chris winkies out there you know <laughs> i met him at the high school heisman yeah uh, i mean i was a high school heisman award winner and i met he was the heisman so he had to speak to us in the uh it's not there sadly it's not there anymore because the yeah, Mike Quick, the, Mike Quick picked you for the high school uh, Heisman Mike Award, Quick. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, man. That's right. My Shout guy. out to Mike Quick, man. Dude, Mike Quick Jersey, my, yeah. Mike Quick. You know, so we played New York, New Jersey. This is a long time ago, in right? Two thousand one, right. and Mike Quick was like, "You guys." He was standing in for all the New York dudes. He's like, "You guys aren't going to win." He's like, "They're going to kill this game because you guys can't. You guys can't beat Jersey." Right. And I was right. like, "Oh hell no!" Right. Like, <laughs> so we won that year, and and at the end, I was on the the uh, screens. I'm like, "Hey, Mike, quick challenge us!" And I was like, "Dude, we're going to do it." 
Yeah, right. And then they killed the game because then we lost like the next three or four years. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can't compete with Jersey football. Like you just can't do it. It's yeah, we'll we'll do that another time, Bernie. Because we'll do Perk, time. Perk, Perk, Perk is losing his head over there. I, know. No, yeah. I, I grew up in, I grew um, up in wait, Rochester, wait, man. I know all about New York. I know, I, mean, I know, Western New York. But hey, I know, you know we it's just okay. we we just don't want to stray too far away. Yeah, we, yeah. there was so no I, such I thing as too far away when it comes to Bernie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tangents. I'm just trying to keep it together. Right. Wait, so, Matt Sims, I have one more question for you because I know we're way over. What's your excitement level like? I'm. I don't know if you were a fan of Wisconsin before, but what what's the excitement now around the Badgers and what should fans expect and think and see and and how? I don't. know, To me, it's just like an explosion of we could be anything. What's yeah, what's just I, your thought on that? I, I definitely agree. And, and that's why I said earlier, I, I really do believe the sentiment of like, the, I think they are a sleeping giant. And I do think that this is, you know, potentially that first step that leads them and you guys into greater glory down the road. You know, I think this is a, a situation where it's really like a can't miss situation. I really do believe in Luke Fickle that way. You know, if you were telling me to put all my money in, in a situation as far as coaching staffs in a new environment this year, he would absolutely be at the top of that list, if not one, one a, you know, and I really do believe in him as a coach, as a man that can coach and lead grown men. You know, I do believe in him as a X's and O's coach as well, who understands the game just as importantly as the people that are playing it. I think he has a great talent uh, at locating uh, players player talent, but also coaching talent, which is another talent onto itself that people always overlook. All the great coaches out there know how to find great assistants. You know, I mean, just look at Bill Belichick and his resume. He's had guys that have John and be a head coach nine or 10 times over, you know, and no one can duplicate what he does, but he nonetheless still has the ability to identify talent and cultivate it and use it as the best of his ability when he has them there. And I believe that same thing for Coach Fickle as well. And I think players like this, you know, are, are just going to continue to be a, a, a normal thing for Wisconsin going forward, where it was much more of a norm for Ohio State, Georgia, and all those other schools in the past. You never saw these big top tier four star Texas six six quarterbacks even thinking about. We were never even top ten. Right. And now we are to me, that's a whole that's like what Fickle brings is we are now totally in everyone's potential wheelhouse. And if you go to Madison and you see it and you're Ex there. Exactly. I've never even been it, been to been to Madison, right? I've seen it on TV and I love it when I'm watching it on television, right? But you got the school. It's a fantastic school, right? You have a really well diverse school, which is always attractive too to kids that are coming from all over the area, right? You have a fantastic culture and a program and a campus that is beyond others, you know, from everything that I've seen and been told about, right? And now you got the guy that I think can really tie everything together and really make that whole culture evolved into another level, right? Into this new modern era of football that we all love and, and appreciate. And I think he really is just like the perfect fit for it. And we have the chancellor on board who's willing to put a ton of money into totally. the practice facility, right. which I'm sure Matt, you understand. And Matt Perkins, obviously you do, you, you play track at Wisconsin um, is, is, you you walk into this practice facility that's brand new and it's gorgeous. It says one thing to us, the the student athlete is you guys care about us. You want For us sure. to be successful. So I think we're going to do a lot of a lot's going to change. Not just coaching. I think aesthetically, when you see the 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 stadium and the practice facility and the food you can eat and your Graham Mertz was a on he's a Pepsi sponsor or whatever that <laughs> right, means right. like you're gonna see these these we're just gonna blow up all of that and agree I, I think to me listen I'm I'm always we're gonna be in the national championship but now I truly can say that and have some like well we could we could be there <laughs> like we should be there um and I think it's really exciting to be a Badger right now yeah, for sure. And that and that's, again, the aspect of Longo and Fickle and that yep. combination together, because that offensive side is going to get a new look with still that same attitude that got you here in the first place that created the Badger type of uh, atmosphere that you guys love, right, that we all appreciate in the Big Ten. You know, but I think he's the, the right guy, too, that is going to be able to still attract that middle linebacker, that defensive tackle, that right tackle, you know, that grew up in the sticks to be like, hey, come be a part of this. You know, he's still going to 
uh, dominate middle America in those areas and those facets to be a really strong front seven to go along with, you know, the glitz and the glamour of the skilled players and what we bring right. to the table. Man, if we had a sauce gardener on the Badgers, like, that would just be amazing. <laughs> hey, yes, sorry, you know what? You'll, you'll get, you, you won't get sauce gardener. You'll get the other saw, the next sauce gardener, you know, uh, which is so, which is so interesting. Cause we talked to this uh, running back, Anthony Davis, another Jersey guy, right. Um, who was a badger. And he said that the perimeter dudes we've never gotten. And we just got four DBs in the last week. Yeah. So, and, and, I, and I think that's just, again, that, you know, how easy it for them to, to, for coach fickle to walk into a room and just say, Hey man, you know, I found sauce. Like that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's really all you have to say. Right. I found sauce. I coached him up. He went first round, you know, we could do the same for you at an even bigger program with more at our disposal, with more money, with more, you know, stuff in our, in our hands, right. To, to give you these opportunities, you know, to give you those, those keys to the car to be successful. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a sexy proposition when you say it, <laughs> no doubt, you know, like no doubt. walked into my house and he's like, dude, we're going to pay you. You're going to do all these things. You're going to be the next sauce gardener. Or, I don't know. For next, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the next thing is just, you know, Hey, where do I sign? You know, yeah, where do I where sign, do I sign bro? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And also he's, and then he could just say like, dude, come to campus. I For sure. You don't believe me. Come in August. It's the most beautiful place in the world. Absolutely. And, Matt I'm Tim's, going. I'm going. Gotta, I don't, dude, I don't even need when. a scholarship. I'll be there, player. All right. Tell me what. Tell me <laughs> yeah. what, dude. I. I promise you, we will. I'll show you the best time in <laughs> Madison. <laughs> I like. I look forward to it for sure. <laughs> that sounds well, listen, great. I, I, I know I could talk to you forever, but thank you so much for joining. Um, no, thank you for having me, so fellas. Cool. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you again, and uh, yeah, great times for Wisconsin, man. Really excited and <laughs> looking forward to watching it as a fan of football too. For sure, for sure. Dude, well, I have Matt, one more question, actually. Oh, go for it, Burn. Go for it, Burn. Wait, one more. One more. <laughs> Matt Tins, you played at Don Bosco High School. In I did. I did. Yes, sir. Matthew Bernstein. That is like the premier, like coming from Little Westchester, everyone's <laughs> like, dude, Don Bosco. How how cool is that? And how competitive is like every dude on that team is an NCAA player? Yeah. I mean, I think at the time I really got fortunate with the fact that I was there, like really at the foundation part of the school, you know, so I was there. Um you know, in, in, you know, the early phases of when that similar to what Wisconsin's going through right now, I was kind of there at like the beginning of laying the groundwork for what Bosco is now nationally. And uh, it was really great because we were winning a lot of games, a lot of tough games with guys that, you know, weren't division one football players. You know, really what you had is you had a lot of D one double a, a lot of D two D three guys that played, you know, with balls and heart and toughness, you know, old school Jersey football. And then, and, you know, you sprinkled in like a guy like me and Justin Trattown, Sam Griffin and all those guys who played at the division one level, you know, and it was just uh, it was a great opportunity to really just, you know, learn the game of football and learn really just how to play as a team and uh, really grateful for Coach Toll and giving me that opportunity. Dude, that's like playing college ball as like a 15 to 18 year old. Uh, it was way more intense, honestly. You know, when I got to college, I was like, this is easy. Like, yeah. you, you want you want to just do 10 gassers? I got that all day. I was bear crawling 10 gassers before, you know, so we were not the faint of heart as far as conditioning and um, borderline abuse uh, in certain states. <laughs> I think high school football uh, at Jersey, some other places are borderline abuse. Yeah, now, no doubt. Like Especially with the way that, that we say things in our uh, tri-state area. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. No, thank you for having me, Matt and Matt. And uh, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll connect again soon, man. Yeah, it sounds like we will all be together in Madison this fall is just what I'm hearing. <laughs> damn right damn right let's go <laughs> all right let's do it. well thank you so much for le for listening and watching the believe in badger football podcast on the believe podcast network presented by betonline.ag until next time on wisconsin on wisconsin yeah wisconsin there we go <laughs>